<laughs> and I've been uh, watching your show for a very long time now. Um, it's the first time I'm calling. Um, I am born and raised Muslim um, and uh, was a staunch believer of it for a very, very long time. Um, and recently, in the past uh, <laughs> couple of months, I've um, come to realize that a lot of the teachings cannot be true. Um, so I'm stuck in between this uh, this weird position where um, there is so much um, um, magnificent and um, uh, impressive science that's uh, available inside the Quran. Um, but then there's also so many of the other things, uh, a lot of the things which you guys refute, which uh, I really have to agree with. Um, so I'm ca really kind of stuck inside a position where uh, some of it I feel might be true and then some of it absolutely cannot be true. And, um, you know, uh, it kind of makes me sometimes I want to believe it despite all the irregularities and um, so I really don't know what to do. Um, also the other thing is um, uh, I have come from a religious uh, household so a lot uh, everybody in my house um, prays. Um, uh -huh. Muslims are supposed to pray five times a day. I used to and I don't anymore and they've started noticing this so I just cannot say to them that I don't believe this anymore. Right. Um, so do you kind of see where I'm coming from? Yes, yeah. Um, well, regarding the, the claims that the Quran contains some impressive science, okay, um, I'm not an expert on the Quran, um, but I've heard these claims made by people over and over again, and when you investigate, what you find out is that it's really not that impressive. Um, I've also heard people make the same claims about the Bible, that there are passages in the Bible that reveal um, certain wisdom, and you know there was no way for people at the time that this was written to have known that. Um, and if you what I would suggest is that if you have somebody making a claim that there's some great science in a particular passage, go in and read that passage as if you'd never heard anybody make any claims about science there. As if you're an outsider reading this text for the first time and no one is claiming it's about science. If, and, and if you read that passage and you don't get any kind of science out of it, then what you're seeing is that somebody's coming in after the fact and reinterpreting that in light of what science has discovered since then. And they're basically applying that interpretation to that passage. It kind of sounds to me like right. you're hungry for maybe some more answers. And if you want a book that is full of amazing science, read Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species. Yeah. It's an amazing read. The man put together words like nobody else and put, them to, put these ideas together out of uh, brilliance. It's just brilliant. Uh, but I, the I, family, I yeah, that's hard. Um, uh, sorry, I definitely do agree with um, what you just said. Um, if you do reread those passages uh, sometimes, uh, it comes out as if it was a particular kind of interpretation. Um, for example, uh, it is taught that, uh, it is said in the Quran that the moon revolves around uh, the earth, which is fine, but it also said that the moon has reflected light. It doesn't have light of its own. And when I investigated that, that it turned out that the, the word that's used, there's three meanings of that word, and one of the very, very less used meaning was ref, was that of a reflective lamp, so mm -hmm. to speak. So that's kind of shady, but I would say like there's other things like that the Earth orbits the sun. Um, now, I know that at the time this may have not been known to people of that area, but I think it's possible it might have been known to people of other areas of the world, but then how would it have been communicated? Um, 
you know, so it's like some things are just, I feel like it, it, it's interpreted differently now because we know of the science and then some right. things are just, um, some things just still impress me. I don't know what to say. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that you're on the right track. You know, you're questioning your beliefs and, and you're investigating these things. And I mean, I, I would encourage you to continue to do that. And, and I would second Claire's recommendation to read Charles Darwin's book. Um, it's pretty phenomenal. And um, also um, Carl Sagan's book, Demon Haunted World. Um, that's, uh, you know, a classic for everybody. Richard Dawkins book. Yeah. Um, the God Delusion. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yes, it's an eye opener. I do agree with most of what he says. Um, um, I have a, there, a I mean, there, there are also other things like there's, there's a lot of embryology in detail in the Quran. I'm not an embryologist, but it appears to be correct. Yeah. I don't so, know how so somebody l could. Let me ask you something regarding that embryology stuff. Okay. You're talking about people who probably kept animals as livestock, right? Mm -hmm. Who wrote those passages? Do you think it's possible that they, um, you know, discovered some of this stuff in the course of butchering a pregnant animal? Yeah, a lot of it is simply or, observation. Yeah, uh, I, you wouldn't need any kind of divine knowledge if the if the Quran said something about uh, ontogeny recapitulating phylogeny, now now that would be pretty amazing. Uh, but the words and the things that it mentions that I know of, I am not by any means an expert. Sounds like the sorts of things that somebody would observe a long time ago. Yeah, and it's not really science so much as it's observation. Maybe a lucky guess here or there. And like you said, some wrong guesses here and there. Mm. Well, uh, some of it is, uh, it starts off by saying that uh, a human is created from a clot. And then uh, it's, it mentions the certain stages of the development of the embryo. And then yeah. Abortion. the bones develop. And Women miscarry. <laughs> yeah. It's not that, it's not that bizarre. Okay. It's not like they had... Uh, MRIs or other machinery that they could observe these things or um, son uh, sonograms and such. Women have mis been miscarrying right. since, you know, as long as women have been getting pregnant. All right. Well, well I, I certainly understand that. Um, I, I do question everything I read, and a lot of it has turned out to be reinterpretation. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. um, I, I'm sorry, was Claire the name of the other Yeah, host? yes, yes. Uh, um, Claire, you were saying something about the family? Uh, yeah, it's one thing to question religion and um, make those decisions and changes in your own mind, but when you're steeped in a world and a family that that religion is part and parcel of everything, uh, when I go home to my in-laws, uh, they view everything through the lens of God and Jesus. Um, it's very hard for them to identify with anything that is in my uh, worldview. Uh, they know I'm an atheist and my mother-in-law and I talk about it. Uh, so if you're the only one, and uh, I imagine it's somewhat similar to my husband becoming an atheist in his family. It's, it's no small trick. There, a lot of things can happen. And Greta Christina has a book, um, Coming Out Atheist, is that the name yep. of it? Yep. People telling their stories. Now, I imagine it's mostly biased towards Christian s stories. Uh, I know from a friend who teaches at an international school and has a lot of students from Saudi Arabia and other Muslim countries that it is not a small matter to reject right. Islam. It is no small matter. It's not like rejecting, rejecting Christianity here. Um, oh, yes. If I said this publicly, I'd be executed. Exactly. Yes. It's no small yes. matter. Uh, so for me to give you any sort of advice, mm -mm. 
you have yeah. to do what you I, need to yeah, do. I, and, and in fact, even, you know, um, Christians who call us who don't have any connection to their family other than, you know, a social connection now, they're not dependent on them for anything, um, we always advise them that, you know, don't, um, don't feel like you have to come out to your family, if, especially if that would put you at some kind of risk. And, and that goes especially for someone in your situation. Uh, don't put yourself at risk. Um, you know, at some point, there may come a time when you can get to some place that's a little safer to be open as an atheist, but um, it sounds like that's not um, where you are right now, and so I don't want you to do anything that would put you at risk. I think lying is a I fine think. thing. Yeah. Yeah, in those instances. Yes. Right. And then I have a, a third sort of concern. I don't know if it's a concern or not. But there are times when I really want to go back and just into believing. And I know right. I'm like shutting down my common sense at that point. And I do understand it's for comfort. Um, but, you know, there are times when you absolutely have no hope and then sort of that comes naturally to you. Right. What do you do in those times? I don't have those times anymore. I, I don't actually ever want to go back. Um, and, and I actually, I guess my deconversion happened over a period of time. It wasn't like I woke up one day and had this epiphany and, and decided, oh, I'm an atheist today. It was sort of a, a longer period of time. Um, and by the time I got to the point where I realized I was an atheist, I really didn't, um, I, I hadn't been part of any kind of religious community for a long time anyway. And so uh, I just never wanted to go back there. Um, it doesn't mean that I didn't want community. And I think part of that is, um, is a desire for that community. And so, um, this is where kind of being unable to come out as an atheist is kind of a problem. Um, my recommendation right now would be is if you can join online atheist communities, that may be the best option for you in this situation. And especially if you can join a community where you can talk openly about, you know, kind of where you are in terms of this feeling like you need you know, or you want to go back, you want to believe again. Even that can be dangerous, though. Yeah, it, yeah, even it, it can. And can so, you I write mean, letters to somebody here in the United States, uh, maybe that would be all right. Or, uh, you know, if you can, if you can be on in those communities, either as like in Facebook communities, some of them are closed, so that doesn't, you know, if it's a um, or a secret group, it doesn't show up on your timeline. Um, so that's a possibility um, using a pseudonym. Um, that's another option there so that um, your friends and family don't know it's you. Um, but there, there are ways of creating community now that didn't exist in the past. Um, and my response to his original question would be different from Jen's. I, too, uh, was raised Catholic and, slow, and always had trouble with religion but didn't let go of it until later on. Um, and I don't need any of the trappings of religiosity the one thing that I fervently wish was true is that there's an afterlife, some sort of afterlife. Um, I think David Bowie said something like, the one thing that doubles him over about dying was not getting to see his daughter grow. I, I want to see what happens. That's, I want an afterlife. It's not happening. Yeah. And that's just something that I accept. Not happily, but I do. Yeah. Somehow, I don't really care too much about afterlife. Everybody's different. Just, yeah. Uh, it's just the knowledge that I, I want to have about what actually happens. Where does consciousness go if it even goes anywhere? It doesn't. It stops. It's, this, like, yeah. a, it's like a car. <laughs> if, you know, cars go and go and go, and you can take out parts, and you, it can, it'll still run, and eventually it stops no spirit, no nothing left it. It just doesn't work anymore. And yeah. we're, just, we're just a bag of chemicals. Hate to get real down to the bottom of it. We're a, bag of, we're a bunch of chemistry going right. And a lot yeah. of that chemistry can go wrong, and you keep on living. You can lose a rear view mirror. You can always <laughs> sort of think, 
but you'll keep chugging along, and eventually that last piston will go, and that's it. And you just stop running. There's no spirit. There's nothing happening there, really, other than chemistry, all gone right. And that is a hard thing to wrap your head around. I know. Yep. And on that note, we are actually right. over time here, okay. so I'm going to let you go. Um, thanks for your call. Thank you for calling it. All good right. luck. And yeah, good luck. Happy thank New you. Year. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, Happy New Year and thank you so much. And I will email you. All right. And, um, uh, thanks for all the support. Okay, thanks. You're doing a great job. Well, thank you. Thank Take you. care.